Deputy President, um, I rise today to commend to the chamber this motion and uh, listen very carefully to Senator Faulkner's comments because he has um, obviously history of this issue and we've spoken of um, the, the change of this long held tradition of the executive unilaterally um, deploying Australian troops into harm's way and also because Senator Faulkner was for a period of time the Australian Defence Minister. And I've heard nothing at all this morning from any side of the House that would undermine the basic principle that um, we seem to be hearing, I guess, from all sides, that if it ain't broken, then don't fix it. And I would put to all of my colleagues in here that it is broken, otherwise we wouldn't be in this situation. Uh, I took on the, uh, the so-called War Powers Bill, this Defence Amendment Bill has been on the notice paper since the mid-1980s. The Australian Democrats introduced it, uh, Senator Bartlett had carriage of it uh, when I came into this place in, uh, in 2008. And it was the first bill that I introduced, and it is profoundly important. If you believe that this uh, extraordinarily important decision-making should remain entirely behind closed doors in the hands of the Prime Minister uh, on the advice of his National Security Council and the Cabinet and secret briefings with the opposition, you would have to go back and look at uh, how it's okay for Australia to retain this tradition, and yet our parent parliament in Westminster the United States Congress, kindred democracies all around the world, put these decisions to their legislatures and effectively trust that the collective intelligence will be greater than that of the executive sitting alone, responding to imperatives that are, that are occurring largely under the table. That is what happened in 2003 when we went into arguably an illegal invasion of Iraq on the basis of just such an imperative, and then the executive authorities had the nerve to turn around and blame the security agencies and the analysts who had been telling them all along that there was no link between the, Israel, uh, the, the Iraqi government uh, and the, the, the gruesome attacks on the United States in 9-11 and that furthermore there were no weapons of mass destruction in Iraq and had not been since 1991. The intelligence agencies and analysts were telling the government that. You went to war nonetheless and I would have thought that if that example doesn't persuade this parliament that something needs to change, what on earth will it take? Because ripping the lid off Iraq, uh, which had, uh, because there was almost zero tolerance among the secular Ba'athist regime in Iraq for the kind of hideous extremism that we see prevailing in the northwest of that country today, now there is. That explosion of sectarian tensions, we helped ignite that in our illegal invasion of that country on the behest of the executive. Millions of people around the world, including myself, demonstrated and marched and tried to stop that war, and civil society was right, and you were wrong. And I think it would be easier to listen to your arguments about this present deployment if there was even one small admission of culpability in the disaster that's unfolding there at the moment. And so when we hear the Prime Minister at his uh, press conference yesterday saying this is strictly humanitarian, we know, for example, uh, that it's almost certain that Pine Gap is being used for drone targeting inside Iraq and elsewhere, that the SAS are on the ground, that the Royal Australian Air Force has uh, fighter bombers either on their way or uh, at, on very high alert, that we are now apparently running Russian or Eastern European weapons uh, in to protect uh, Kurdish minorities in the northwest. We are practically at war. This long since ceased to be any kind of humanitarian gesture. Now, if this was put to a vote, and Senator Conroy uh, and, and Mr Shorten have already put a view into the public domain, it may well be that this parliament would uh, accept the deployment. But you, Senator Johnson, and the rest of the executive and your colleagues would be forced to circumscribe and put some boundaries around the scope of the deployment. And I suspect the reason that you won't do that is that we are once again Korean War, Vietnam War, First Iraq War, Second Iraq War, Afghanistan War, acting at the behest of the United States government, not the people of Australia. Have we not proven ourselves yet to the United States government? Can we not stand on our own feet, as Canadian authorities have done, as the British have done, as other countries have done, the New Zealand authorities have done? What is it that's special about Australia that says we have to simply just keep following in the slipstream of this great power that has made so many grievous strategic errors in recent history. 
So yes, we will return to this debate, and I think it's appropriate that it happened this morning and commend this vote to the Chamber. Thank you.